What if my book isn't as good on paper as it is in my head? I understand this feeling. I get a great idea for a book, I go to start writing it, and the words are flowing, but when I read the words that I've written, they don't bring to life the story as clearly as I can see that idea in my head. The story just doesn't breathe with the same life and electricity that it does when I think about it in my head. And it doesn't feel good. I completely understand this feeling. I get this feeling every time I start a new book because my rough drafts are messy and they don't live up to the ideas that I have in my head. But if this is you and this is an excuse that you're using to not write your book, then I have some advice and a little bit of a pep talk for you in today's video. Because you don't want to let that fear hold you back. So because I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my writing and I am working on this, a trap that I often fall into when I'm starting a new book, especially coming off of a book, is that I have just been editing a book that is pretty polished, that fits together. I've probably just listened to the audiobook version, so I'm feeling good about the prose and feeling good about how polished it was. And then I have to jump right into a very messy first draft. And the prose of my very messy first draft does not live up to the standard of prose that I had been writing in the previous book by the time the book was finished. So I always manage to convince myself that I've somehow gotten worse as a writer or that somehow I'm not good at writing anymore. And this makes it generally harder for me to put pen to paper because my confidence is shaky. If you have experienced this feeling, just know that it's completely normal. I have now written six, seven, seven books maybe, seven books and this still happens to me every single time. So if you're experiencing this and you feel your motivation for writing dwindling, the first thing that you need to do, and this is really super important so you can't skip this step, is give your book permission to absolutely suck. Go in with the expectation that you're not writing a book. You are writing a skeleton of what will eventually become a book. Imagine if you judged a skeleton by the standard of a human being. It has a lot less stuff on it, it's not the most attractive, so it wouldn't measure up all that well, but that's pretty unfair because it's not a human being and it's just a skeleton. I try to let go of the notion that the words that I write in my first draft are going to end up in my final draft at all, and that they are just there to act as a roadmap to, that I can layer stuff onto as I revise the book. I like to think of my books and my drafts as layers of an onion. I put down the first layer, which gives me the ability to put down a second layer and hone a couple of things and tweak a couple of things and just do another pass and make it just a little cleaner than before. And then I do another pass and I make it a little cleaner than that and I add in a different thing that I thought of and change a certain dynamic and sharpen something else and that's the third layer. And then in the fourth layer I might change something else and I might make all of the dialogue actually sound like the characters. and. I will probably delete a little bit more fluff and that's just another layer that goes on the onion and by the time that I'm done with my edits, I have a bunch of different layers of edits all layered on top of each other which makes up the final book. But the onion didn't come out in one pass, it came out in five passes. Thinking about it this way takes a lot of pressure off of my drafts because I know that if I haven't figured it out in one layer, I'm going to be going back over it again and then I can tweak something else in the next layer. And I'm always improving it and this is never the last and final edit that I'm going to do to the book, unless it's like right before publication date, but by then I'm pretty happy with the final product. I've done so many layers and edits. If you're feeling like this, another thing that really helps me snap out of it is to focus on the momentum of my drafting and get into a good rhythm with how many words that I'm writing. I like to give myself a word limit for each chapter or an approximate word target for every chapter. I'm an overwriter, so this helps keep me from going a little too crazy with my drafts and going on side quests and tangents that don't really help move the story forward. And the act of seeing myself make progress through a manuscript makes me feel a little bit less like I'm wallowing in it because there is a very strong forward momentum and a forward trajectory. So there isn't as much time to be getting bogged down in the feelings of it all and the overthinking of it all. I'm a plotter, so it also really helps me to have an outline and to know where I'm going. This helps with the whole forward momentum thing. If you're a pantser, 
I also recommend just figuring out maybe your ending or your midpoint or just a couple of flag post plot points to anchor yourself in as you're moving through the manuscript because if you always know where you're going, it's less likely that you're going to lose that momentum and start wallowing and waffling in these feelings of uncertainty. Trying to create this forward momentum is why a lot of people say, oh, you need to set a daily word count, you need to write as fast as you can, you can't edit as you go. It's to try to keep your eye on the horizon. And while I think it is important to keep your eye on the horizon, it's also important to keep a pulse on your story to make sure that you like where it's going. I can typically only get through halfway or a quarter of the way through my manuscript in my first drafts before I throw in the towel and start my draft two. That's why you hear a lot of people encouraging you to set daily word counts and to stick to a writing schedule and to not edit as you go. It's because you want to create this forward momentum that makes it a lot harder to stop once you're starting to write your story. Because this first draft is where things are most likely to fall apart. Once you've written a first draft, it's a little bit easier to write a second one and keep layering and editing, but finishing that first draft is really tough. Another thing that helps me refocus on my story and not on my feelings of uncertainty is to change my goal for writing. Instead of hitting a word count, I change my goal to be to dig into the emotional reality of every scene as powerfully as I can. I want to really figure out how each scene feels, feel those emotions, and find out how to bring them out on the page. Sometimes, instead of thinking about speed and how fast I'm drafting, thinking about the actual prose and making things as sharp as possible, and changing my mindset from being one of productivity to one of discovery and unearthing something, like I need to chip away at something over the course of a scene to discover what it is, can help pull me out of that perfectionistic mindset and get me writing and flowing again. If you're losing momentum and motivation because your first draft is not as sharp on paper as it, the idea was in your head, it's important to remember that your first draft is only a tool for you. Its only purpose is to help you figure out what your book is about, and who your characters are, and who your characters need to be in order to tell the story that you want to tell. So shifting mindset to one of discovery and unearthing, almost like you're an archeologist trying to chip away at like layers of soil in order to figure out your story, can help snap me out of this whole idea that my first draft needs to be perfect, and instead puts me right in the mindset of I'm unearthing something, and this is just some sort of Ex exercise that I need to do in order to discover my book, which helps me write my subsequent drafts and ultimately figure out the story that I want to tell. So if you're feeling like this, don't let the fear overcome you. Just because your rough draft isn't as good on paper as the idea was in your head, doesn't mean that you can't get it to be as good as it was in your head with multiple layers of revision, layering on all of those different little pieces in order to construct the story that you want to through different revision passes over time. This is just your step one, and if you don't finish your first draft, then you're not going to have anything that you can lay layer over in the future. And then your book really won't be as good as it was in your head because it will not exist. In my opinion, the most important quality a writer can possess is persistence. Because if you're persistent enough, you can learn as much as there is to know about writing, and you can write as many books as you could want. You just have to keep showing up for it every single day, and figure out how to conquer your own fears and conquer your own brain when they try to sell you silly stories like this one. So I hope that little video is helpful to you. If you have a second, I would really appreciate it if you could like this video and also subscribe to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Claire Fraze, and I'm an award-winning author who makes videos sharing actionable writing tips that helped me make my own writing better. I am the author of the They Stay series, which is a five-book paranormal thriller series that has ghosts in it and mystery, so if any of that sounds like it's up, to your, up your alley, uh, go check out my books. I hope you have a fantastic week, everybody, and as always, happy writing.